The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour on this 26th day of January. Dow's at 20,100 at this particular point, up 31. SP is down a fraction at 2297. <laughs> the 3,000, uh, 2300 levels coming up soon. So, we're looking also at let me move this away. I wanted to show you something very interesting here. The E-mini, leg C to the upside. Leg daily, leg C to the upside. Weekly, 120-minute chart. I'm calling this a peak F and a Chapman Wave 5, and there should be some kind of a consolidation. The consolidation says that the Dow, what I said to subscribers to my opening call this morning, is that based on the 120-minute chart, we were right there. I said there's a real good chance, based on I, I've been showing these two 120-minute charts for a little while now. Why? Because the technique that I've been developing over the last year and a half, having put it into practice now for a while, it has what I call a Chapman Wave 5. The derivation initially started from an Elliott Wave 5. Now it has, the only connection it has now is the 5 itself. And it's the way of identifying the five. And here I use the methodology based on the Chapman wave to uh, get to that five. It actually breaks almost all the rules of Elliott wave. So the only thing that I can say is the five is <laughs> a unifying factor. So we've got leg five in the 120-minute chart. What happened yesterday, because we needed just to go above 20,082.00, how often? In history, I did a study years ago. There was a book that came out. It was the Dow. They just had the closing prices for the Dow uh, going back to 1921, I think, maybe 22. And within the context of that uh, formula, I, I, I used to study it and I notated what I call round numbers. And it was really seldom that you got the Dow, even when it was trading at 45, to go to 45.00. Why is it significant? I have no idea. But I've found that it is significant. And it, can, it can give a lot of information. Um, within that context, what I was thinking is that the Dow should go to a leg D in the 120-minute chart. The S&P didn't have to make a new high. And if you look at the 120-minute chart of the E-mini, it was already at a leg F and then went to a peak F from late yesterday. What I'm looking at here is the kind of strength with the breakout. Now, now we can go to the numbers. With the breakout of the MACD just turning positive, the stochastic bouncing back above 80%, the weekly chart, I, I cannot forgive myself for not having just gone along any time in, uh, in late October uh, along the Dow because the monthly charts and weekly charts were just so strong. Well, we do. We had other positions. That's fine, but I really wanted to do it on the Dow. So um, at this particular point, the Dow, having gone into the twenty thousands and having the news media, I, I cannot tell you in just the short space of time, within maybe a week's time, and especially even yesterday, having hit twenty thousand, how many uh, people have said to me, and just shaken their head and said. How can, in, with all this going on, with such uncertainty with Trump, how can we, how can the market be so high? How can we be at 20,000? And all I said to them was, because the market had to do what it had to do. I, it's, I find it absolutely fascinating that what the market structure is building right now has been built on the previous legacy. This is the Obama legacy that he never, ever wanted to admit to. He created an incredible, one of the finest, greatest bull markets we've had. And you can disagree with so many things. But the reality is, if you're in the stock market, this is what you want to see. You don't care if it's Democrat. You don't care if it's Republican. 
You just want to be right on this market. And this market is doing very nicely at this particular point. So now having gone into the 20,000 virgin territory, this is it. We're done with having to, to um, pierce 20,000. We are right on 20,100 at this particular. No, we're at 20,108. That means that anyone listening to the news is going to say, what, 20? I, I got out of the market um, during that whole debacle, uh, that whole October period. And I, I just I haven't even had a chance to get in because every time I turn around, it's higher. I don't want to buy at the highs. But I have to tell you something. Based on the work that I'm doing, there is a chance, and I know we're going to talk about the VIX right this very minute, the volatility index at 10.94 is near its lows. The, uh, what did I say? It was, oh, gosh, I got a gosh. I had it down 10.30. No, sorry. 931, I think, was the low of 1993. Squash, squash. 19, so 2005, 988. 1993, November 1931. That's the uh, cash VIX index. Um, and that is the low. I, I think I have it going back further than that. I used to have, oh, I have the VXO. I wonder if, I, if I've even got my notations on this. VXO.X. Wow, I wonder, because the, oh, there it is. I have to do it all over again. I can't believe it. All right, I will. Back in 87, the volatility index on the Dow hit 172.79, October of 1987. That was the, the next big move for bonds to uh, start their decline. Now, um, what is really interesting about this chart is that the high that was made back in 2008, in October of 2008, was 103.41. So, yes, there's room to go to the upside. Let me just put it this way: if you were going to, if you were going to buy an instrument that didn't decay as fast as the volatility index is concerned. You could nibble on this volatility index and say 10.54, just this is money, this is gambling money, I'm just putting it's insurance, I'm putting it aside. I hope I don't need to use it because the market will keep going up and my portfolio will go up. But if there is ever a, a, a debacle, as we've seen before, look at this perfect peak, A, B, C, D, E, right there. That was the October of 2008. Um, hi. If ever there's another debacle, I'm in. I'm in because one of these days it could be in the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, or who knows. But you want to know something. Um, this is a lousy instrument to trade. And if anybody got in, say, maybe a few years ago, when the market was really in, in turmoil, September, October, maybe, I can't remember, two, about three years ago, I think it was, if you bought the volatility index, let's call it, say you bought the TVIX at about, I don't remember what it was, maybe six, seven, eight, whatever it is, that's, that's split. 20 to 1, it's split again. So all I'm going to say is to you, it's the instrument that you choose that's going to help you. Um, just find the fix itself. Uh, it might work, but you're going to have to watch it's quite a bit of decay. All right, so we've got the break coming up. I didn't finish everything I should have finished. I will do that when we get back. The Dow's now 44, and I wanted to show the 120. No, I wanted to show this chart right here. Nice, nice build of, of support. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender.
Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. All right, enough with the chatter. Let me just get to this real quickly. You see the chart that I'm showing now, the 10 minute, this is the 10 minute e mini. It made a peak F top um, sometime yesterday. It went to an E and the technicals were fading, then it went to a U-shaped, cup-shaped formation, went slightly above to an F, and then it started its descent. That descent uh, has gone to a really choppy phase, and it's exactly the choppy phase that we were looking for in that I wanted the Dow to make a new recovery high. The S&P didn't have to. Well, it's exactly what we're looking at here when I'm talking about the e mini What happened? Oh, when I'm talking about the ESH-17, the e mini um, March contract. See the 120-minute chart? Made a peak F in Chapman Wave 5. I think it's going to just digest these gains. I'm anticipating some kind of a doji candle. If I'm correct, and I now let me go through the numbers. We, I give you the numbers. Here's the Dow, INDU. Leg B. It's broken above all the resistance levels. It's made the shortest rectangle formation. And I thought that there'd be a little bit deep, a little bit deeper pullback before we broke out. Didn't get it. Why? Because the flat 94% in the stochastic was just fabulous support. So what happened is it didn't even touch the nine period moving average of 19,710 and said it spiraled higher yesterday. Now, what's really important about this particular move is that on a weekly basis, I'm calling this C. I, I just really, to call it G slash C when everything is acting so well, I think this is a C. And I'm anticipating when these weekly charts complete, we're going to get a much deeper correction. Finally, we'll get that correction. There'll be a real correction. But, and here's the, the, here's the very interesting thing. On a short-term basis, you see we've gone to that leg D right there, in the 120-minute chart. Now, let me just get this away. The reason why I'm liking what I see is because the weekly chart, now it's a little squash, but you'll see it now, still has this Chapman wave stalk leg formation. And the one-to-one, -one, there's, there's also the... <laughs> A pattern that I look at that can give you the one-to-one, -one, and we've kind of extended above it. And what we're looking at is the chap, the 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 Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone is quite wide at this time. I, I am going to probably make it smaller, but I wanted to just base it on historical um, highs that are, are of most importance, and that gives me a level that we've broken above right there, which in this month is 19,666. And the resistance we'd be looking at is 20,700. 
20,770 to, to be exact. I'm being exact on a, on a trend line that is not 100% exact. So I'm saying in the in the mid 19 uh, in the mid 20,000 um, 20,000 maybe 800 somewhere around there. Okay. So with that in mind, and look at the MACD still improving. Look at the stochastic at 93 percent. Now, one of the things I've been talking about, you know, you know, I'll maybe what's today? Today's Tuesday. Maybe I'll no. Well, today's Thursday. Tomorrow's Technical Friday. Maybe I'll I'll talk about it more tomorrow. I don't want to waste time now. But this is the bigger picture. But in the meantime, in the den, someone said, um, "No one is talking about a crash." Uh, where was it? Anyway, nobody uh, somewhere over there. There is not anyone I know that is not bullish. A crash is not even being considered that would break the boat. Um, there are two things that are really important in my work. Number one, it is the sentiment that I feel um, from my anecdotal evidence, and usually my anecdotal evidence is, I, I go with it a lot, it's proved itself. And that anecdotal evidence has as a forerunner, the, 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 the crux of it, is that majority of people are in, in total disbelief and a lot of people are not even close to being fully invested. In fact, they're not even close to being more than partially invested or they're just putting in the money every month like they always do. But there's no extra cash that's going in. If anything, they've pulled out some. And that, I think, gives a wonderful cushion. And number two is news reports and emails I get from, uh, uh, you know, this, the, the junk mail stuff, as well as cogent, I mean, people that really understand markets. I get stuff and, and a lot of people are talking crash. Crashes occur when you least expect it. Crashes occur when there's exuberance and uh, really there's one sector that is just on fire in 2007, 2008. It was the real estate. I mean, you've got, there's nothing on fire right now. Um, so. Let's just set that aside. And now let's go on with the nitty gritties. Dow's tremendous support in the 20,000 and 20s to 20,000 level. 19,000, 931 is a nine period moving average. And I think the upside for now reflects a move that should take us into the 20,000, 250s, maybe the 20,000, um, yeah, let's just say 20,000, 250s at this particular time. Right. Um, now, when. We are looking at the volatility index. Yes, it is important that the volatility, well, it's up today. It's up 17 cents at 10.98. But I think what's happening is that volatility is going to start to be bought a little bit now at these levels. But I would not be surprised if we do go somewhat lower and then we break yesterday's low of 10.51. That's what I'm thinking. And, and you would if, if the market is going to go higher and, and sustain a move to the upside on the daily, that is. All right, here we go. Look at the S&P, SPX.X. Um, nice move up. Leg C has 22 at 2296, down at dollar 62. And that 120 minute chart of the E mini suggested that there could be some kind of a pullback. I'm, I said to subscribers, I think there's going to be a doji type candle today. And we'll see if tomorrow we can go higher. That's all. Um, at this particular point, the S&P has resistance. It's really hard to say because all my trend lines. Uh, point two, I have to go to the weekly chart. The weekly chart says 23.06, but into next week, it'll be 23.07.80 would be the uh, the resistance. And it's leg C in the weekly, leg C in the daily, leg C in the weekly, leg C in the monthly. Isn't that interesting? When we get to DDD, that's when I start to get really nervous. Okay. Now, what happens with the QQQ? The Qs are at 125.48. Um, they might be a little extended here. I don't really have a way of, of renotating this. I, I, I think I'm correct in saying it's in leg D. Uh, there's no reason why not. Here's the thing that is making me nervous. And it makes me nervous in the sense that this has been a wonderful indicator before. And I don't know if it's going to be the same kind of wonderful indicator now. And that is the unbalanced volume is at highs, screaming at highs. And whenever it gets into this particular level, I have to be careful. That's why I'm thinking next week sometime we make some kind of a top. Maybe not, not next week, maybe the first week of February or whatever it is. We, we are getting closer to some kind of a top that's going to make the weeklies pull back quite sharply but still hold 
pretty good um, support levels, but the daily could come down very quickly and scary. Okay, so now let's go to the IWM. IWM is at a peak, we could call this a peak C2, I mean C4 um, in the Chapman Wave methodology. I'll put it in here as a C4 at this particular time. We've had these before. Um, it's, it's unusual, but what happens is you're using up time and all of a sudden, and we, I would not be surprised if the IWM, the Russell 2000, trading at 136.60, down 60 cents, could have a really good move in this first quarter of 2017. But in the meantime, chop, 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 it isn't breaking down. But so far, it isn't breaking out. It breaks out if we can go to, wow, spent already two seg segments just in doing the overall analysis. 138.83 breaks out to the upside. Let's just make it real simple. Basil Chapman, Dow's up 35, S&P is uh, down 86 cents. I'll be back. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. T TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS as proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, folks, uh, we're looking at a Dow that's really um, trying to digest those big gains of yesterday. Nothing big deal yet. Um, the SMHs, the Semiconductor Index, did pull back a little bit, but just a little bit, still holding at 7489. Um, and some of the sectors that have been weakest uh, remain weak now there's something else that i wanted to look at um i got an email from uh, michael he wants to know it's hi basil if you have time maybe look at mcig i have it in leg f on the daily but am but i'm wondering if there was a restart thank you uh, michael oh michael in hingham mass right near us okay um so the corporate profile is mcig stock market symbol mcig 
Uh, let's see. At 0.39, so the folks, this is just not for, the, for anyone, if you, this is a, a pink slip uh, company, but it, it has gone to a D in the monthly chart, and it's gone to an E. I might have missed something, but I had already notated this. I knew that I'd, I'd done this before. I can't remember why. Um, it went to a, I don't think I missed anything. No, I think it's, I, I might might be wrong, but I've got it as a, a peak E in the daily, P, a leg E, probably a peak E by tomorrow in the weekly chart, and a leg D. Now, I want to read this. A technology company focused on two long-term secular trends sweeping the globe. One, the decriminalization and legalization of marijuana um, for med med medicinal or recreational purposes, and two, the adoption of electronic vaporizing cigarettes, commonly known as e-cigs, by the world's 1.2 billion smokers. The company also owns a va Vapolution, which manufactures and retails home-use vaporizers such as Vapolution, vapor, <laughs> Vapolution through its wholly owned subsidiary. Anyway, so, um, you know, I remember looking at this and I wasn't sure what it was, but I did say that I think it has the look of a biotech stock. And in fact, that's kind of the character of this thing. All I can say is at 0.39, you have a risk that it could pull back probably to the 0 0.25, 0 0.22 level. There is something there. So I don't think it's going to break down. It's still going to be a viable company. And they have it some kind of a profit. So I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm going to say, Michael, if you are, if you looked at it and you have no position, because you've followed this, obviously. Um, now, I don't have a restart, but what I do has, have is a brand new inside buy mode of a grade A and a grade B because it's, it's way below the previous high. And all I can say to you is if, if you've been following the stock, it has made a leg E, but the fact that it's even gotten to 0.50, having been down at 0.03s, it's really, there's something there as um, a risk reward. I'm not talking about it as a stock. I'm talking about it as a chart. And what I'm going to say to you is, at, because it's held so well for the last four days, my thinking here is that if I was you, I would start a little position here, kind of, you know, just just a very 0.39, that's 39 cents. You've got to be careful. I would start a position, but I'd probably also put a position in that I wanted right here on the low that was made five days ago of 0.37 and another one at a 0.33. The whole thing should add up to the most, the smallest part of your portfolio. In other words, this is a really speculative spec. It's a spec on a spec. It's like an option three times removed because who the heck knows? But the reason why I'm saying it is because it's got a character that is improving in the technicals. So that's what I'm saying to you. And all I can say is, uh, good luck. <laughs> don't get carried away. Absolutely don't get carried away. And let me just write that. I usually write down the calls every day. I, I'm going to put this down. MGIC. It's not a call. It's an email. So there you go. MGIC. I'm watching it. All right. Next thing that I had was um, JetBlue. JBLU. JetBlue. Uh, not Jable. That's JBL. I think I must have missed something. Yeah, JBL. Oh, not bad. Oh, it's almost got the same inside bar there. Let's go to JetBlue. JBLU which is trading, had a big spike up, and now it's pulling back. You know, I, I, have a little, I have a little problem right here. I personally have missed the, the, the airlines. They were just a fabulous in, um, uh, move to the upside. I just kept looking and looking, just kept seeing it go up. And I thought, well, crude oil is holding well. But ever since crude oil actually broke into the, the 50s, um, it's kind of stalled. So Jay Blue, I'd be careful. And I'll tell you why I'd be careful. If I was looking at the airlines, X XAL, um, look at that resistance. I drew it in the other day, and it hit it exactly today, and it's been repelled. So I'm just thinking that the airlines are having a consolidation. I suspect, what is today, January 26th, I suspect by the middle of February, maybe the, the third week of February, We'll be looking at the airlines again. And if the airlines, the XAL, has broken into the 120s, that's going to be really positive. And if it breaks down and goes under 105, I'm going to say, hey, this could be a harbinger of, of transportation. We've got to be looking at it. But what would I do right now? I'm just saying to you, be careful. Uh, AAL, that's American Airlines, holding very nicely. So I've looked at Air, American Airlines. It's held, it's one of the better looking ones. 
um, because of the weekly chart, the way it's holding the nine period moving average. That's the one I'd keep my eye on at 49.01. I think it's a slightly better chart formation than JetBlue. Yeah, definitely. It's a better chart formation. So I hope that helps you there. Next question was, whoops, where did I go? Next question is, oh, I messed something up. There we go. Uh, Bob wants to know, oh, the FTX thing we were looking at yesterday for Bob. Yeah, Bob, I just said to you, uh, my, my thinking is you should take some off. But you know what? I'd be prepared as a gamble because the, the whole thing about the single leg A up is you, 191.47 right now, and a dollar for, down $1.48. If Federal Express, FDX, can hold just below the low of yesterday, which was 190.61, and maybe you could take it out, but it's got to get right back in. Then we're looking at the 120-minute chart having the chance to keep building on its technicals, and they could have a nice rally. So I'm going to say to you, I had said I would take off at the time when we were talking about it quite a bit of my options. I'm not sure what your stance is right now, but I'm actually prepared to put only a part of my profits back if it hits anywhere between 190 Point sixty one and one ninety. At that point, I would just say, okay, I'm giving it one more day, and if it holds support, I'd be buying something like the if they have one ninety two fifty options, the call options, I'd be buying those. Something like that. That's the that's the way I would look at it. Okay. Next thing is, uh, we've got, whoops, uh, JetBlue. I did that. And I'm just going to pull up the oh Sherman Williams S C H W. Question about that. You know, I. Wow, look at that move. I didn't do my, I, I had done the notation on this a while back. For some reason, I don't have it here. Um, I love the chart, but then it had a really sharp pullback. And to come back from this kind of turnaround in the arch formation is a very positive, um, it's up, it's at 307, wow, 307.20, up 23.78, it's up 8.39%. So on a A, A, B, C, D, A, yep, A, C, E, F, this could be a brand new A, this is an, a brand new G slash C, uh, G slash A, the G slash A. Uh, I'm going to be watching it closely, and the weekly chart is very bullish. Sherman Williams is doing a great job, whatever it is, and I like it. If it can hold in one week's time, what's today, Thursday? If by Friday's close, not this Friday, next Friday's close, Sherman Williams has not taken out its low of 298.50, that would be a really bullish sign weekly and monthly. I'll be right back and we'll go uh, through. Yep, I've got other questions coming up. I'll be right back. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will 
will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE -E or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Hi, right, folks, we're back. So there are a couple of questions, very good questions. So the question here is, um, uh, I'm trying to go in sequence. Yeah, so uh, Tom, uh, you want to know about Sherman Williams? That's my answer. Sherman Williams is acting very well. Actually, let me just do that again. I can't even remember what I said. Sherman Williams acting very well. Yeah, that's that whole thing with it. I'm going to put in a rectangle here because it needs to hold that rectangle and make it real simple. If by Wednesday, uh, Wednesday or Thursday of next week, if it's below 20, 296, that's going to say, oh, okay, it needs a timeout. So far, the actual candle that we're looking at on the day is really good. I think I showed this. I don't know if it actually came up. This is the 120 minute. This is the two minute. Sorry. This is the 10 minute chart of the E mini. It's trying to fi find some kind of a base right there and rally off it. But until it can break into the 2297s, that's about three and a half points up from here. Um, it doesn't mean anything. It's just chop, chop, chop in that candle that I said. I'm expecting some kind of a doji candle today. Otherwise, it'd be a very positive candle if it can push much higher. And if it takes out 291 as support, it's going to go down a bit more. There's the two minute chart. Same sort of thing, actually, in the two minute chart. Just chop, chop, chop in a yo yo pattern. So let's go on. We're going to talk about. Um, I haven't even looked at gold or anything like that. I better do that. Look, gold is down. Yesterday we discussed it, possibly a peak F. Yes, it was a peak F top. And this pullback is going to be very important because I said to subscribers that if gold, gold needs to hold the 1186 to 11, oops, 11. I think I see, yeah, 11. 86 to 1168 is going to be really important support. The GDX, exactly the same thing. Made a peak D. We are, we are long. It's done a really well. Peak D, you expect it got there in two bars, uh, three bars earlier than it should in the left side, right side price time match, but it couldn't hold the price at 2425. It's at 2279. I would not be surprised if it's going to test that low right there of 2190. Wouldn't even be surprised if it goes to 2160s. But it's just consolidating. It's going to be more than consolidating if the dollar, DXY, hey, while I'm talking about the gold, tonight, you're going to, uh, uh, Tom O'Brien has this uh, webinar coming up at 6 o'clock. Go to the front page, check it out. Should be absolutely fabulous. He's talking about the 300% long and short gold, the dust. And, and I constantly forget the, what the upside is. This the dust. Why do I remember the dust? And the, and the, somebody help me. The dust and the, dust and the, dust and the. We even traded it at some point. I can't remember right now. It's the opposite. Nugget, there it is. Of course, it's the gold nugget, N-U-G-T. So um, there it is. So dollar has, remember I said it's it's in this downtrend. It's making, trying to form some kind of a base on this green line that I drew in the other day. It's made slightly low lows, and now it's a big candle. My thinking here with a stochastic at 10% and reversing up, MACD's got a ton of work to do. I'm treating this first as a bounce. 
at 100.67, up 64 cents. The dollar has, until it can get to the 120, 102.50s, 102.30s, 102.50s, right now I have to treat it as a bounce. However, one of the things I'm looking at is, remember I said when it trades in the 99s, on any weekly close in the, in the 99s, I would start to become a lot more cautious. Well, it hasn't done that. It could have done it because it went to 99.79 this morning. Now it's trading at 100.67. I like the dollar the way it's acting, um, but on, on, on a monthly basis, still got another week to go, whatever it is, until the end of the month. And what I am looking at is the weekly chart has had successively lower lows. This is just a single leg A. Single leg A to the downside, a sharp move like this can become a really strong positive if the MACD does this M-shaped pattern and crosses back to positive. It's not going to do that until it can get into the high 101s, the low 102s. So this is, follows very closely. Consolidation in the goals. Even our NG, which is our Nova Gold that we have has made a peak D. They're all, anything you want to look at, look at this, ASA just made a peak F top. Um, you can go on with almost all the goals. You remember how important it is in my work when we make these uh, D, E, or F tops? Um, that's where you can have the longest and sharpest price move, but it could take time rather than price. That's what we'll be looking at. The other thing we want to look at here quickly was crude oil. Crude oil is down. Uh, oh, it's up now. Crude oil is up $1.17. That should help the market a little bit, but I still think crude oil, chop, chop, chop between the 55s, maybe 56, but 55s and 51s at this particular point. The nine period moving it, average is at 53.15 support, but 51.72 is the 200 period moving average. Twice now it's bounced off it, and the MACD is trying to turn up. Stochastic's had a nice move to the upside, but it's still only at 40%. But this is saying to me there's more upside at this particular point than downside in crude oil. That should help the market a little bit. Now let's go back to Bob wants to know about KRE. <clears throat> Cree, which is Spider S&P Regional Bank, leg B, wonderful leg B in the, in the monthly. This is a leg D in the... Now this, this is an issue here. I, I'm calling this at least for now an instant restart in the weekly. Right? I don't see any reason why not to. But... At the same time, there was a chance that it would be going to a G slash E. If it was a G, this it would have taken out the nine period moving average and Cree instead of being in 56.65 up 23 cents right now, it would be down at the 50, 53 or lower level. So this is a positive. The MACD is good. The stochastic's at 92% and flat and outstanding. So now let's just go through this and say Cree, the regional banks, looking very good. I am going to have no choice at this particular point, but to put an up arrow. Why? Because we went down lower in this P in the trough D than the start of the previous leg down from peak E to make an, a trough E, well, trough B, sorry, start the brand new buy mode to a quick A, B, C, D. Remember, with the quicker you go and the shorter in, in height, you go from an A to a B to a C to a D, the quicker you get some kind of a pullback, and we've got that. But we are lower than the initial starting point. Now, I have a plus here. The question would be asked by people who have studied the Chapman Wave methodology. Why didn't you put an up arrow? Because the MACD, stochastic, everything was turning down. This is what I've said this in every one of my master classes, master trader series. This is the hardest notation to make. When you have a, a V-shape or a cup-shape formation, is this going to be the start of a brand new move to a D? Or is it just a double top that's going to fail? I hardly ever put an up arrow at the beginning of these kinds of moves uh, because it's very difficult. And uh, it's usually only afterwards. So I'm saying to myself, big deal. So I put an up arrow in. I wouldn't have got that. I can't put it in. I can make it red or green or something to say, yeah, a good chance, but I, I wouldn't have got it. I wouldn't have got it until we broke above C. And I would say, oh, <laughs> up arrow. So let's get out of that. So brand new move should go to a C and a D in the daily KRE. The BKX index, BKX, look at this. BKX at this particular point is has not broken out, but it did break to this upside. I'm calling it for now a G. And this could be the start of something bigger if it takes out. I'll, I'll be very clear about it. If the BKX, the Keith Root um, bank index, is able to, I'd like to say close, not just take it out, close above 94.23, the high of the 13th of January. 
That would be a leg A, B, it could be a C, but it'll be blue. It'll be a strong move up. This one gets that little inverted cuppy, that little inverted V. So this is like a brand new move to the upside. So it's a gray A and a gray B right now. Weekly chart of PE, this is going to be even more important than KRE um, if it breaks out. But at this point, it hasn't. I'll be back, Basil Chapman. We'll talk about the VIX. We'll talk about many other things as soon as we get back. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Learn how to trade options with swim lessons brought to you by td ameritrade think or swim next on tfnn hi folks so a couple of things so um so it's a couple a couple of people mentioned things about the vix you know i use the vix in a very special way if you time it perfectly you can get fabulous percentage gains and they more than make up if you you lose one and a half two percent or something like that a couple of times um but at the same time, uh, it is just a very difficult vehicle that you, I, my impression is that the, the best way to use it is to have a tight stop and you can get it a few times and you can lose a little bit. It's just not a big deal because it has to be a very small part of your portfolio. But it, when you are correct, you will just more than make up whatever you lose. That's the, really the beauty of it. Look, when something like a, the, the VIX index goes from, uh, let's put it over here, from let's say this low, of the 13th of January at 10.94 and shoots up to 13.28. We're talking about, you know, seven, what is that, 17 percent or something like that. It's just real nice. So um, that's really, so that was my point. And the other point is that uh, it's a scam and all that. Yes, I've been through that. I understand it. But it's there to be used, treated as a little mini 
potential cash cow periodically, but it can also usurp and take away. Let's go to Gator and Franklin. Gator, how are you? Hey, Basil, how are you doing? I'm well, thank you. I got a quick question for you. Sure, um, fire away. Uh, when you start the wave count, you yes. cannot have your A be the first, the lowest low bar. Correct. Okay, what happens if the next bar is the same low but a different high? In that other is words, a, what, I, yep. what I was looking That's at is oil. Okay. On a 120-minute chart on oil, now you're – your software, my software, counts 120 minutes different. Uh, one's on the hour, one's on the half hour. But it's but you have all those lows at six o'clock to say eight, between eight and nine yeah. at ten. There were the lows yes. that were 52, 57, 52, 57, then 52, 56. Let's just say you had 52, 57. Two things. One is right. in the futures, for a long time, I've counted the low bar. As mm -hmm. long as it is not pierced as the low bar. In other words, that's the. Right. I still want to see one bar between. In other words, if the bar of at uh, six o'clock uh, with a low of 52.57 also sprung up and it had a high of, say, 52.84, I still would have a tough time calling that A. But, what if the, ne yeah. now if the ne next bar has the exact same but if low? The next, but if the next bar has exactly the same low and makes a higher high, that yeah. would be A. Yes. That's but number this, one. It, okay, in this case, it didn't on my chart. So, okay, but let, so so you've got a, a leg A at one t on the 25th of January. Well, well yeah. actually, I, I've got a... I would count this, if you count the next one, I have the A bar, at, it's the 9 o'clock bar, which might be the 9.30 or the 8.30 bar for you, at the high there of um, so uh, Gator, 53.47. Gator, let, let me do this. It's a really good thing to do on Technical Friday. If you Are, are you going to be around tomorrow doing my sure. show? So sure. let's do that. Just remind me again, because there are a couple of things that I want to update. Over the okay. years... I found that in the futures, I have a little more flexibility because they trade in 25 cent increments. They trade in different increments. That's number one. Right. So the uh -huh. low bar, uh, you still want to see a, a higher leg for the next bar to start to theoretically to officially say start the, the wave count. But at the right. same time, I have a little more flexibility. And the other thing is over the years, gosh, there was a stock that I looked at today, maybe we even bought it, I'm not sure, that had a double bottom at exactly the same price. And I called it leg A, a peak right. A. So I'll do that tomorrow. I'll try to find the things. And it's a great question. And a lot of people have asked me that. I'll update it tomorrow and we can do it. Hey, great question. Have a great day. Thanks for calling, Gator. You too. Bye, Basil. Thanks, folks. We're closing out the Dows are 41. Have a great day. Don't forget Thomas' uh, webinar tonight. We've got great shows coming up today. We'll be back tomorrow. Hey, check out my opening call. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised and hopefully profitable. I'll be back tomorrow. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This is TFNN.